Now, there's some new technology that may help us with forecasting future storms. It's a special high-tech ship that can sail right into the eye of hurricanes. Pretty amazing. A high-tech surfboard will hang 10 as the next wave of tropical systems approaches the U.S. And Richard Jenkins is the CEO of SailDrone, the tech that is tra taking tracking to the next level. Thank you so much for joining us. So um, we're excited to talk about this here. Um, this drone or this fleet of drones is equipped with cameras and special instruments. So explain what these drone ships aim to do this hurricane season. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for being on. So these hurricanes, these drones, they collect in situ data, which is real measurements from the surface of the ocean inside the hurricane. What drives the intensity of these storms is a rate of change of, of heat and moisture from the ocean to the atmosphere. So taking measurements on the surface is key to understanding how these, how these storms form and intensify. So let's talk about what these ships, th th what they're going to give us that we're not getting from the hurricane hunters. Yeah, so the hurricane hunters, they give us wind speed and pressure at elevation, which is very useful, but it's not on the surface. So I said, the, the, what's driving is the heat coming from the ocean. So measuring the, the pressure and the variables on the surface of the ocean is really key to what's giving the storms the energy. You recently had a test in Jacksonville. What did you learn about their capabilities and drawbacks too? Yeah, Jacksonville actually had deployments. We deployed them out of Jacksonville for the um, boats that are stationed near the, near the coast. Um, we have three other boats stationed out in, in the Caribbean for the, the east. Um, we test these vehicles in the North Pacific last year. Uh, very strong winds and they're very, very robust. So we're excited to uh, put them into the hurricane storms. Speaking of that, so the, the boats did have some failures and high winds, but now they can withstand 100, uh, and 100 mile per hour gusts. How did going smaller improve the functions? So it's actually not the wind speed that affects the vehicles, it's the waves. Um, the, wind, the winds are very stable up to, up to 100 knots plus. When you get that much strong winds, it's the waves that build very high, very steep, and start breaking. So the large surface area of the sail is what breaks. Um, reducing that sail reduces the pressure on the wing and the waves, and that hopes to uh, get a much higher wind rating, so much higher survival. How do you control them, actually? Where, sort of where is ground, uh, ground zero for where you will control where these go and then getting them back? Yeah, we have a control center in California, Alameda, California, where we control our global fleet of drones. All drones are controlled by our satellite, um, so you control where they go, what they do, and what they sample. Wow, that is, that is just amazing. Now, one of the larger versions of the drone ship is going to map the seafloor. How will that information help us in the future? Yeah, mapping seafloor is really important. Less than 20% of our planet's being mapped, the ocean, um, for safety navigation, geophysics. But for hurricanes, it's really important for, for uh, storm surge intensity. Mapping the seafloor near land helps us explain how the water will rise or fall um, during those storm surges, which can be very deadly. Yeah, but yeah, for sure. One of the things you mentioned that measuring that ocean con heat content, which is really important when it comes to forecasting if storms are going to rapidly intensify. So what is the time frame in getting the data back and then getting that into the modeling? So data comes back in real time. It's literally like a 10 second latency. So as soon as the vehicle is measured, we send it back via satellite and straight to NOAA. And that goes straight into the models for the next model run. So we really hope this data will really help to inform us about storm intensity and also storm landfall location. Wow, that is uh, really going to be helpful. And especially for the fact that we're calling for, a NOAA's calling for an above average season. How many storms can these ships sail into, do you think? Good question. So I don't think it's the number of storms. I think it's the intensity of those storms. Um, once it's been through one, it could probably go through many, many more at the same intensity. But obviously a higher intensity puts more stress on the vehicles. So we'll have to wait and see what is the upper limit for these vehicles in these storms. Exciting. And Richard, um, how big is your fleet? We have a fleet of 100 vehicles, about 30 deployed right now globally. And how many will you send into one storm? Um, right now we have five vehicles deployed in the area. Um, so the, the goal is to trap them as the storms come from the east to the west. As the storm forms, the ones in the east will measure it, and as the storm intensifies, the ones in the west will measure it. So probably one or two vehicles per storm. Sail Drone CEO Richard Jenkins, thank you so much. Very fascinating stuff. You're appreciated and definitely seems like the next goal for getting observations, right, is to take, you know, take humans out of the threat zone and put some, uh, some drones in there. So appreciate it.